I think it's pretty safe to assume that everyone knows the 14900KS runs really, really hot. I mean, this thing can't even run stock out of the box. But this what I have here might be the answer to all my problems. The EK Direct Die AIO. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here, and today we will be fully maxing out the 1400KS, taking it to levels that I don't think anyone else on YouTube has done yet. I haven't done direct die since 10th generation, and I'm honestly super excited to test this out, which kind of brings me back to why I bought it. I really want to get back into overclocking, really tuning Intel CPUs to get as fast as possible, especially because we must beat the 1700X3D, guys. I'm not an Intel fanboy, I'm not an AMD fanboy, but I just want to see tuning both of them to as high as possible. Maybe I'll even delit and run direct die at some point on this one. The 1400KS is fast, we know that. But like, when I can't even say to run it at stock speeds out of the box, there's kind of an issue there. I love seeing 5.9, 6.2 gigahertz boost in games, but like I'm running COD at those times at like 180 watts. So who cares? I mean, back in 13th gen and 12th gen, I just delitted my CPUs with a rocket cool delit tool, and then boom, I was kind of pretty much freed of all thermal headroom. But this takes it to a whole nother level. Ever since about 2021, when the 12900K released, I have been interested in seeing what direct die really can do. I know there's been water blocks. I know that that's been around for a while, but using an AIO is kind of something I've always been interested in. I remember back then, someone I know in a Discord server actually i'm not joking this is crazy to think about now like dremeled out their cold plate a little bit to let the capacitors fit and then use direct die and the temperatures were insane it was like 60 degrees max in occt like super heavy workloads no issues this product has been out for a while as well probably a couple months since like the beginning of the year maybe a few months into the year but i found this locally secondhand so i was like eh, you know why not I was already going to delit it. I had a delit tool sitting at my house. So I was like, it's a good deal. I'll do it. I know, like, I know everything that's going on with EK. We're not going to talk about that. If you care about that, go to Gamers Nexus, go to Kiru Tech. I don't agree with what EK is doing, but if they're going to make a good product like this, I'm going to check it out. And also, I didn't wasn't the one who purchased it, so I'm not directly supporting EK. So don't think as this is me as like, yep, go EK. Don't believe in that. There are a couple weird things though with this AIO. You do have to delid your CPU. So deliting is when you take off your IHS, you gotta use some tool, and then you clean off all the solder, typical solder that's underneath, and then replace it with something else, typically liquid metal. You can use thermal paste as well, but it's not gonna perform as well. Deliting can be a really scary process. I know, it can be sketchy. Sometimes you might even kill your chip. So there's high chance at times. Which brings us to today's sponsor, Delit Express. Delit Express is a company that offers a delitting service to where you can ship in your CPU and get it back delitted, or you can even buy pre delitted CPUs from their website. Delitting can get up to 20 degrees lower temperatures. You will as well get lower power draw as well as more performance possibly by allowing the CPUs to boost higher. I mean, even with these high quality 360 millimeter AOs in 420, sometimes you can't even fully get the max performance and you're still temperature limited. If you're interested in checking out DLIT Express, the link is down below. They have both Intel and AMD CPUs, so I highly would recommend checking them out. And if you do want to check them out, you can use code CHAMBERTECH in the link down below to get $10 off your purchase. But a direct die AIO is so cool in itself, but how is it really compared to a normal AIO? I mean, how does it perform against a $60 360 millimeter AIO. We tested it. So I took my 1400KS. It was already delitted. I got bored this weekend. So I was just like, I'm going to delit my $750 CPU because that's what I do when I'm bored. Then I installed the CPU back into the motherboard. So conducting on extreme was underneath the IHS, KPX on top. And then I compared it to and installed the direct die AIO. The delit itself gave about a 20 degree temperature drop. So delitting kind of is key for these CPUs in my opinion. If you're into overclocking at all and you want just lower temperatures, you got to deal it. Before we even think about the direct AIO, for $60 you can get an AIO that can cool a 1400KS as long as you're delitted. I also did have T30s on it just because 
I go for performance. I don't go for RGB fans. I replace the included fans. So, okay, it costs more than because you're getting really high quality because I'm putting really high quality fans. But you could put like P12 Maxes on it, which are like 30 bucks or something for five. So let's get now into the testing for the Frozen Knot. Okay, here we are in the BIOS. So one thing, the Frozen Knot lets you set max pump speed using like a SATA to PWM. So it's our always running full speed and it doesn't show up on the BIOS at all. The only thing I am gonna do is since this is a KS, this just kind of fixes it. I've made videos before talking about how to fix this, but always just set it kind of to that max all core. And then I'm gonna go to advanced CPU and just disable hyper threading because I don't use hyper threading and I wanna make this a more like realistic test for gamers. Also, the T30s that I'm using are just set at about 1500 RPM. I'm gonna do the same thing for direct eye as well. But T30s, which are pushing air through the AIO. Now let's test the temperatures. In Windows now, as you can see, 5.9, idling at about 28 degrees, pulling seven watts. Now I'm just gonna run VST. This is like my fit. This is my favorite stress test, stress test of choice. Some people prefer other things. I prefer VST. I know there's VT3, but taking a look now at the temperatures, we're pulling about 70-ish degrees, pulling about 280 watts. This is a delitted CPU, so that does drop temps and power a lot. That's why I'm able to stick at 5.9. Um, you do need to delit this, but if you're going to use the direct AIO, then you're going to delit anyways. So let's compare delit to delit. I mean, if you're trying to do like non delid stock, you're gonna overheat anyways. So just, let's just ignore that because we already know the answer. It's not gonna end up well. Here we are about 10 minutes later, no down clocking or anything you see. Temperature's 76, we did hit a max at about 85. Could just be anything, could be one core hit a little spike or something. But pulling now about 300 watts. So obviously as the power as the temperature ramps up, the power also does, just because thermal resistance and all that stuff. And voltage-wise, we are sitting at about 1.3, 1.31, 1.32-ish volts. Now, before we switch over, let's take a look at the actual thermal paste spread. So let's lift it up straight, and look, there you go. So maybe just wasn't perfect contact on that left side. Now let's take a look here. So maybe that was just a little off, but like the D-Lid, and obviously there were no temperature issues. So we can't really complain on that. Now let's switch over. Here we are in my garage, just kind of trying to figure out how to put this together. It seems pretty simple. So basically you take this, which is like their contact frame. You do have to use your own contact frame. You obviously can't use one for the IHS, but then it has the back plate. And what's really interesting is that this replaces the back plate on the actual motherboard. What I'm talking about is this actual like metal piece right here actually gets replaced by this. This is a lot thicker. It's obviously a thicker piece of metal than this. Maybe this will help kind of get better contact and make it all make a little bit more sense. So I'm going to have to take the CPU out, the contact frame out, replace that with this. So let me get the back plate on first. My best advice is actually to like keep the CPU in the contact frame. I'm going to try and connect this just with the back plate, the four large holes, just to connect the cooler, and then do these for the contact frame with it already secured so I don't have to worry about that. It is installed, so basically I did actually have to take the CPU out, but then I just put the case on the side. But screwing these in was super duper easy. Then took the IHS off, it's right here. I didn't replace liquid metal or anything. There's this thing called, use a Q-tip, scroll it around, swirl it around, kind of, remove where it like move around the thermal, uh, the uh, liquid metal. That's all you need to do with liquid metal. Then I install the contact frame, slowly screwing down all four of the screws, making sure that they are pretty even. It is tight. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Flitz Polish. This comes in Rocket Cool Kits. I just have a big bottle because I do let a lot of CPUs. And then I'm going to Flitz Polish this, gets this nice and smooth. And then apply a little bit of conducting on extreme affiliate link down below and then put this thing together look how good that looks like i can see my reflection in here and in there okay so i'm gonna screw it on these screws do have like springs on them but i am just going to hand tighten them not even going to use a screwdriver on these 
here we are back at the desk. So let's make sure that the power supply is on and let's hit the power button. Okay, power supply needs to be on. There we go, see by the light and turn it on. And I'm gonna go straight to safe boot just to make sure. But let's see if we make it a BIOS. Okay, so 5.9, that temperature looks all right. It's a really high voltage though. So we're just gonna go straight into Windows and see what we're gonna, see what happens. This looks real promising. I mean, look at these temps. So only one way to really tell, let's open up VST. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Do we fry our chip? Oh, boys, this is insane actually. Okay, so we hit 80, but like, let's just take a second. 10 minutes later, and honestly, it's kind of like similar. Okay, yes, it is lower and these spikes aren't as high, but this dropped it probably another five, 10 ish degrees. So really this isn't showing like a weakness in this AIO. What it's really showing is the power of the frozen knot max pump and how fast it is and how you need a really fast pump for these high power CPUs. Still, it's still pulling that 300 watts. So it's pulling about the same power draw as well. I don't have Y Cruncher running anymore, but it turns out that my pump speed actually wasn't max. When I maxed out the pump, the spikes went down, temperature went down a little bit, but average temperature was so much better. Well, I'm pretty impressed. The Direct Eye AIO honestly did very well. It's one of those things where it just drops just that little bit, it gives you that little bit of extra edge. If you're playing games, I mean, like the direct die might drop your power draw and your temperatures just a little bit more than the D-Lid. But when you're fully overclocking and running those Y cruncher stress tests trying to get max RAM, this is really going to help. I'm also a fan of how it kind of installs. You do have to remove that weird kind of metal backplate. This here that goes behind the motherboard, all motherboards come with this. But I do actually like that because it's a thicker, more sturdier piece of metal. So you feel a little bit more confident in that your board's not going to flex or maybe it'll fix the flex if you have a uh, z790 apex <laughs> like i think that honestly doing direct die has helped my ram overclock i'm running insanely well in my ram overclock i'm actually able to push it just a little bit farther so in future benchmarks hopefully we'll be getting a little bit more performance on the 1400 ks beating this thing but i mean you know it's not perfect i wouldn't trust this with some people like some of my friends who are very computer knowledgeable wouldn't trust them i don't think they really would know what to do I also would say you do need good fans. I mean, put some P12 Maxes on it. Unless you do like the EK RGB fans, they seem fine. It's just, I want those really high quality fans. I'm doing direct die for a reason. It's for performance. I want to get performance. Which is also why I wish that they would have used a thicker radiator. Most radiators, AIOs, use about 27 millimeters, which is typical. That's what they used. But the Liquid Freezer 3 uses like a 45 millimeter it's super thick and that's what kind of gives it that edge over some of the other aios on the model market now so like if you're using a performance based aio that literally voids your warranty you might as well go all out so do i recommend this product yes but i don't think they're making any as of right now der bauer was kind of the one who worked with them to make this and he has since canceled his ek collaboration so maybe give ek some time let EK figure out all their issues. Maybe they'll rebrand the box. Hopefully they'll come out with some more. This should work with the brand new Arrow Lake CPUs later this year. It should be the same mounting hole, so maybe it'll work. Obviously it does depend on, oh, is the die height the same and all that stuff. Might be a little sketchy. Probably wouldn't recommend it day one. But I will leave a link down below to a D-Lid tool for you guys, as well as affiliate links for Thermal Paste. Conductor Knot Liquid Metal, as well as the GOAT AIO, the Frozen Knot 360. If you guys did enjoy this video, hit that subscribe button, like if you haven't already, join the community down below using the Discord, you can as well support me down there. Let me know down below what your guys' opinion is on the 1400KS, now that it is direct died, do you think, oh, maybe now, like, you know, I, I like deloading, maybe I feel a little bit more comfortable now running this. See you guys later. Peace.